I don't see the broadcast button being pressed. No problem. I will press it. Okay. All good. Button being pressed. No problem. I will press it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to Fanshawe College's Learning Online at Fanshawe College session this morning. My name is Saurabh Malhotra and I will be the host and moderator for this session today. We have a very exciting lineup for all of you. Thank you for joining us from across the world. Before we start the uh, session, we will I will share a quick video with you and then we'll get started with our session. It's the buildings, old and new alike, and those yet to be built. It's the communities, established in one city then expanded across county lines and now international borders. It's the people, those who lead, those who support, in front of the classroom and behind the scenes. Those who engage and those who advocate. From down the street, Awesome. Um, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us from across the world. Uh, my name is Saurabh Malhotra, and I will be your host and moderator for this session today. Before we start, uh, I have a couple of um, uh, things that I'd like to mention. Um, if you cannot hear me, um, you should um, leave and then join back again. That generally solves all the issues if you are getting any. But um, the chat box that we have, we will use it at a later time for questions and answers, not right now. Um, but what I would like uh, once the chat box is available is to ask all of you where you're joining us from this morning. In the meanwhile, I will introduce you to our awesome panel that we have here today this morning. Uh, so first, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Shauna Arash. Um, Shauna is um, the online coordinator for Lawrence Killen School of Business. Good morning, Shauna. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. And um, so she will be the voice of our academic side of our online learning side today in this session. But it's super important for students like you to hear from our current students who are experiencing Fansha online as well. Uh, so we have with us uh, Julianne and Bhavanjit who are current Fansha College students doing their program online. Um, Julianne, Bhavanjit, welcome uh, to the session. A quick hello would be great for everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Awesome. Great, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so before we do that, what I will do is I will um, share with you my slide deck and we will get started on a few things here. Okay. Yeah, so I hope all of you are able to see my slide deck. Uh, before I start, I have to tell my four-year-old to go away from here. Otherwise, you'll keep hearing her Peppa Pig all the time. Kaina, can you go away from her? Kaina, please go from her. Sorry about that. So um, 
this session today is about online learning at Fanshawe College. But before we start talking about that, uh, we have to talk about um, um, the many things that are happening today. I'll just give you a quick introduction of the things that I'm gonna talk about. The COVID-19 update, um, latest updates from Immigration Canada, uh, Fanshawe College's September 2020 update, virtual supports that we have available for students uh, at Fanshawe College, and then Shauna is gonna share details about online learning. We have a special video um, from students who are doing online right now at Fanshawe College, um, but then we will also hear from uh, our students who just said hello to you about their experience and their advice to future students as well about online learning. And of course, after that, we will be open to Q and A's from the students. Um, so before we start, uh, just a quick update about COVID-19 in um, Canada, but very importantly in our city as well. Uh, Canada has around 85,000 cases of COVID-19 with uh, more than 6,000 deaths. Uh, unfortunately, uh, London and Middlesex have around 500 cases with about uh, with less than 50 deaths um, in our city. Um, uh, we've tackled this well with physical distancing. Uh, Fanshawe has tried to um, be a part of the community wherever possible, um, help in any way that is possible to the community. But uh, the great thing about Canada has been uh, these decisions around opening up, not opening up, what to open up are taken um, by medical experts. Uh, even politicians have limited um, uh, say uh, in, in, in these things, but uh, the politicians also follow the advice of the health experts to a large extent, which is something which has tried to uh, help in controlling the spread in our region. Uh, so it's a few examples of how Fanshawe and our community have adapted to COVID-19. Our respiratory therapy students, for example, were released early from their program to start working. The fortunate thing has been, um, we, in our community, we have not had to utilize all that. So everyone was prepared, but we've not come to that situation where we've had to utilize all that additional resources that we had prepared, but it's good to be prepared. Labat Breweries, Labat is a big beer manufacturing company based here in London, Ontario. Um, they retooled their production to switch from beer to hand sanitizer almost immediately. This is almost now two months old. Um, so things like these, these are just two examples, things like this, the community adapted very, very quickly to COVID-19. Now, now what's happening with COVID-19 in our uh, uh, region, in our city? So slowly things are reopening, shops are allowed to open, which are outside the malls, parks, parks are open, so green spaces, London is known for its green spaces. Uh, parks are open, golf courses are open. Strict physical distancing measures have to be followed in any business that is open. And only very small groups are allowed to gather. So even still, I we can't have uh, like even 10 people um, uh, at our home or things like that. So there are very strict physical distancing measures which are still in place. So, how has Fanshawe tried to support our students? Uh, this is not for future students, but like students who've been with us for some time now. Uh, first of all, the applications for fall 2020, winter 2021 have not been impacted. If in your region, the applications were open, they've stayed open and we are processing applications uh, as soon as possible. Fanshawe did create a $1.5 million relief fund for current students in financial aid, and that was distributed to uh, among 3,000 Fanshawe students. Um, this was back in March, I believe. Um, Fa uh, Fanshawe also created other bursaries, other need-based bursaries as well. Um, but the thing that we've also done is, because many of our students are doing the program online from out of Canada, um, of course, they don't need the health insurance, for example, and a few other things. So there are a small amount of savings on, on those things as well that students experience. Um, Canadian Immigration has um, put out regular updates around um, students who've had to move online or students who've had to start online in Canada, out of Canada. There have been a lot of clarifications provided. 
So the big thing is the postgraduate work permit is not impacted uh, because of online studies. Students are allowed to complete up to 50% of their program outside of Canada. Um, so there are, there are clarifications that immigration has come up with. Now, of course, there are more clarifications that we do want uh, from immigration, but those uh, would be forthcoming, we've been told. September 2020. So earlier this week, um, Fansha announced um, our plans for September 2020. Um, the great news is almost all our programs are running. There are only a handful of programs which are we are not able to run, but almost all of our programs are running. Um, about half of our programs are fully online and about half of our programs are blended. Blended means there is some face-to-face -face delivery at least. So for example, if in a program in that semester you had five subjects or six subjects, uh, at least one of them is face-to-face. -face. Uh, so these details have been released. However, details like how many of your courses are online, how many are face-to-face -face for blended students, those will be forthcoming sometime later in the summer. Um, but basically at this stage, what this means is fully online students, once they have their study visas, they can start online. Uh, they can start, um, they don't have to come to Canada right away. Um, but students who are in a blended format, they have to come to Canada uh, to start their program once they have their study permit. Um, what tools will be used for uh, online uh, depend on a lot of our academic divisions. Um, and that clarification will be provided also when we go, uh, uh, when we go further in, into the summer. Health and safety and physical distancing is, uh, is the biggest thing that is being considered for all the programs that we are doing. So for example, in some cases, the capacity of the lab was 20, now it's four or five. Things like that we are doing and our health and safety is working with the provincial health um, to come uh, to follow those guidelines very, very strictly. So I know you'll have a lot of questions about specifically to your program. We did send emails about specific programs if they're online or they're blended, but for, especially for the blended program, how much is blended and how much is online, those details have not been announced right now. They are being worked on right now and they will be announced sometime in the future. Now, we went virtual um, about a couple of months back. Um, and with going virtual, we knew, of course, we need virtual supports for students. Um, we've done almost everything that we did face-to-face -face virtually. So these uh, workshops that we've been conducting right now uh, online are, are a part of it. But current students who had questions about their study permit, their work permit extensions, and uh, regular program advising, Fanshaw College's International Student Life Coordinators are available online through virtual appointments as well. Uh, for future students, our international education advisors, our international representatives who are based around the world are available as well with appointments uh, online. Uh, what Fanshaw International also has done is we we used to do the what's up where um, uh, we kind of checked in with new students, how it's going, what's happening. We've taken what's up online and what's up happens once a week, um, sometimes on Facebook, sometimes on YouTube, uh, sometimes on Zoom. Um, and this is just uh, an opportunity for current students to just come in, say hello. If they have questions, they can ask those questions as well, but it's just a catch up with international students that happens every week for current students. Just some examples of how our services have gone online, have gone virtual, all the immigration workshops and all that, that our international students are very interested in. They've all gone online and they happen on a regular basis. College services. So, so many of our services that our students depend on have gone virtual as well. And they are doing a great job. So career services is hosting regular workshops around career services online. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you uh, know or not, Fanshawe does these awesome awesome workshops called Fanshawe Works. These workshops are 
uh, done even before you start your program. So for example, from students who started in May, these workshops happened uh, the Friday, the Thursday and Friday before uh, their, um, uh, their, their program started. And Fancho works, uh, these workshops talk about employment. They talk about um, creating a profile that an employer is interested in. They help you through that process even before you start your program here at Pancho College. So our career services does an amazing job uh, being online and being available for our international students. Um, what uh, our career services also does really well is organize these workshops uh, that are in person and they will continue doing that uh, at a later stage. But for now, um, these workshops are available online for our students. Library services, um, the first time you're doing an assignment for your professor, you might need help in uh, APA referencing format or, or anything. Uh, library services is not just about books. Of course, there are books. Of course, those services are also available virtually, but there are so many other things that our library services also does. They hold these workshops, which are virtual and available to all our international students as well. Fanshawe Wellness Center, brand new center on Fanshawe College's Oxford Street campus, of course, is not accessible to students right now, but they're doing these online uh, fitness and health workshops for students all the time. Uh, Fanshawe Student Union is keeping our students engaged. They're doing a trivia night. They're, um, they're doing many other things to just kind of catch up with students, but they're doing many other substantial things as well. Uh, Earlier, when we went online, they offered uh, grocery cards to students in need, um, who needed help with groceries and things like that. So there are many other things that Fanshawe Student Union does as well. And Fanshawe Student Union does uh, some of the best events that happen at Fanshawe College. They are doing it virtually. They are doing it um, online right now. So do follow them on Facebook, Instagram as well. Uh, and you'll, be, uh, you'll feel like you're a part of the Fanshawe College community. Now, uh, a big question uh, from students is, can I arrive in Canada? Um, should I arrive in Canada? Uh, as I said, we are waiting for a lot of clarification from immigration around this. At this stage, um, only blended students uh, are required by Fanshawe College to be in Canada to start the program. The program start dates have been delayed to September 21st for all the programs. They've been delayed by two weeks, and those two weeks are exactly for this reason the 14 day self isolation period. Now, all students would require a 14 day self isolation plan who are arriving in Canada. The details are being worked on. Uh, Fanshawe Cares, uh, which are our arrival services, which we've done for 10 years now, these services will help you with a self isolation plan. Uh, we are creating a document right now in terms of what the self isolation plan should look like. Uh, where can students stay during that self-isolation plan? What are the services they'd be required? All that is being created uh, by Fanshawe Cares right now and will be shared by our future students, by our, uh, with our September students very, very soon. Uh, and as I said, details around if your program, how much of your program is online, how much of your program is blended, all those details will be coming soon. But also we'll, share with you more details about uh, your arrival in Canada in the coming weeks as well. Um, so uh, oh, as, as I said, almost half of our programs are fully online. So those students will have to experience online learning, uh, but even the students who are doing blended format, uh, many of their courses, in many cases, almost all of their courses, except one or two would be online. Uh, in some cases, all their courses would be in person, uh, but those details, as I said, are awaited. But even if you're in a blended program, there will be online learning as a part of your program right now. Uh, a few things that I'm, I thought of and I thought I should share with you uh, of like based on online learning. So if you're fully online, you, would, you could start your program from your home. You have um, you can save on your living expenses for a few months at least. Of course, you'd have to arrive um, within your first semester to start your second semester here in person, but you have that opportunity of saving on those living expenses. Uh, you are not delaying your work permit, right? By starting online, you're not compromising your work permit in any way, and you're getting uh, started for your work permit 
as well right away. Of course, you can learn from your comfort, from the comfort of your home. Um, sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes you have to make sure that you're disciplined around that. Uh, so that's really, really important. But a big thing, and Shauna mentions this, is the flex, flex, flexible schedule. Uh, so you would have flexibility as part of your online learning. And this is something that I think you'd really appreciate, but also will help you get into the discipline, get into the, um, uh, the schedule of learning daily. Uh, but that's another big advantage that online learning has, um, uh, that, that is offered. Um, that uh, is, is, is really it from me in terms of sharing some updates from Fanshawe College uh, as well. What I would like to do uh, now is just to show you um, uh, a short video. Um, this, this video is basically uh, an advice, testimony, whatever you want to call it, from our current students who've experienced Fanshawe online. Of course, there, there were challenges for students as well, but everyone has overcome it. And our students have been super successful online, super engaged online. So this video um, that I'm gonna share is just a short testimonial around that. Hi everyone, my name is Ramon Smith. I am originally from Jamaica. I'm currently enrolled in the graphic design program at Fanshawe College. Hello, my name is Juliane Ferreira. I'm a journalist from Brazil and I'm here at Fanshawe in the business marketing program. Hi guys, uh, my name is Manu and I'm from India. Uh, I completed my construction project management uh, in Fanshawe College. Hello everyone, I'm Fatima Hafaras from Iran. I gained the GPA 4.17 out of 4.2 in pre-health program at Fanshawe College. Hello, my name is Rodrigo Moura. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I'm a business accounting student. At first, I was a bit skeptical about online classes, but to be honest, I had a lot of fun. It gave me the opportunity to interact more with my professors. It also gave me the opportunity to customize my learning environment. And I also learned self-discipline and some responsibility. Um, I was lacking that. <laughs> but like overall, it was a really, really good experience. As long as you have a strong internet access, maybe an app or two for scheduling, or if you're old school like me, you could write notes as you go along, you'll be perfectly Fine. Last term I finished online due to the coronavirus and now my third term will be all online and I believe to be successful in an online program you need to have a routine and uh, know how it's going to be your week so you to have a schedule and plan all the days that you are going to how you, what is going to do and study and the assignments that you have to do. I am doing my second course, uh, it is BIM, Building Information and Modeling. Nowadays it's completely through online. The thing is, we just need to be online at the scheduled time and uh, it's a great thing that our faculties, branch faculties are giving great support uh, and great effort uh, for providing the online courses. Try not to get overwhelmed. When you have a proper plan and start from the very first day, you can enjoy this new method of education. Being able to keep studying is really helping me cope with this social distance situation. I have a lot of friends that are feeling bored or losing track of time. Guess what? I am never bored. There's always something to be done. One piece of advice, keep up with all your courses. Eventually, the amount of assignments will be overwhelming, so keep up with all your courses. Don't let it accumulate, and if it's possible, work ahead. That's the best advice that I can give. During this time of um, COVID or Corona, I, I found out that I am now a master chef. Um, I can cook pretty much anything, but I specialize in um, pasta. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy it and I hope you have fun when you get here. Falcons. Wanting to all of my friends, uh, be safe and stay healthy. Try your best to stay motivated and keep in contact with your friends and professors. Stay safe and healthy and take care of yourself. And being able to do something productive is one of my secrets to be dealing so well with this whole situation. So that's it. Welcome and good luck, Falcons. You can do it. And yeah, enjoy your time at Fesha College. Stay safe, stay well.
Awesome. Uh, so a lot of our Cardin students um, uh, volunteered to that video for our future students. That's amazing. Uh, now uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Shauna Roche again, uh, who uh, is the online coordinator for Fanshawe College's Lawrence Kinnan School of Business. Now, before Shauna uh, shares her slide decks and starts, I I'd like to mention one thing. Fanshawe has multiple uh, academic divisions within the college. Each academic division delivers online education a little differently. Of course, there are many common ways, many common tools that everyone is using, but it's different in, uh, in some sense at least. Uh, but Shauna Hare uh, and our Lawrence Killen School of Business is one of the most experienced in delivering online education here at Pancha College. Uh, if I'm not wrong, they've been doing it for more than nine years. Um, so we wanted to showcase uh, one of our divisions to give you a sense of what online looks like. And I know the content Shauna has to share with all of you will be very, very exciting to all of you. Shauna, over to you. Thanks so much, Sarab. Hi everyone, my name is Shauna Roche and I am the e-learning coordinator in the Lawrence Kinlan School of Business. And as uh, Sarab said, we've been doing um, online learning and blended learning for, for quite some time now. And what I thought today I would do is just go through some of the um, frequently asked questions that we get from students. And I'm excited to showcase a, a very new project we have for you, which I think will really kind of help you um, understand what the online experience would be like uh, at Panshaw. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and share my screen. And I just want to note that my slides will be available uh, after the session. I've made sure to include links for everything so that uh, they will be available to you. So some of the questions we get most frequently from students are really around what online learning looks like. And so, uh, you know, what does online learning mean at Fanshawe? Well, typically it means that the student is going to connect with our learning management system, which at Fanshawe we call Fanshawe Online or FOL for short. And that allows the student to complete the requirements necessary to achieve the credit in the course. Uh, FOL is what we would call kind of an internal website or course management system, and it's customized for each individual student, allowing them to access their specific courses and uh, it, it even um, share some kind of like, you know, non-course material uh, as well. So some student support material uh, through that system. So Fanshawe Online uh, will hold all the content for the course. So for instance, uh, a professor might share some notes, some readings, some videos, some interactive material uh, for you to kind of read and go through during the week. And then it will also allow you to complete some assessments. So maybe do some quizzing to check kind of your knowledge um, or allow you to do some group work and you know, share um, some projects through a submission folder. Uh, for each course, uh, the professor will share with you what the expectations are for the course and you know, what each week will look like in that course. So they will kind of provide an overall schedule for each week. And what we typically um, communicate with students is that it's really good for you to log in uh, to each of your courses and take that schedule and, and try to amalgamate it to kind of create a plan for yourself. Uh, you, you notice from some of the student testimonials that you know, one of the key things about online learning and really being a face-to-face -face student as well is having really good time management skills and being organized. Um, and I'll share uh, an app with you later uh, that we have that can kind of help students with that as well. <clears throat> Next question usually that we get is around, you know, logging in at certain times. Now, um, every, every school and program and course will be different. Uh, normally, most of our learning at Fanshawe takes place um, what we call asynchronously, which means that the material is there and available for you to provide you with flexibility to complete it at your own time. However, it is supplemented with synchronous sessions. So uh, the, the professor uh, will schedule a synchronous session each week. Um, usually that's voluntary. In some programs, it may not be. Um, in the business school, usually it's, it's voluntary. So if you can't make it, uh, the professor will schedule another session or they'll record it for you to watch at a later time. And during those sessions, it might be used as, you know, working through problems or questions or discussion um, and give you that opportunity to connect with some other students and with the professor. The professors are always available um, to meet with you uh, virtually or, um, 
you know, to communicate via email, however it works best for you. How much time should you spend in an online course? You know, again, it's very similar to what you would do in a face-to-face -face class. So, you know, majority of our courses tend to be on average around three hours a week. And we usually expect around, you know, the same amount of time kind of out of class. Online, it works out to the same. Now, every student works at a different pace. Um, so this can really vary. And can I do uh, courses at my own pace? So, you know, again, because of the way our courses are designed, they're usually designed for, you know, kind of flexibility. So, you know, if you are working, um, you know, during the day or you have a part time job or you have other responsibilities, whether that be, you know, family members, um, you do have that flexibility to kind of manage your time. And how do I get started? So uh, emails will be sent out, you know, once you become a student and they will allow you um, to log on to our learning management system so that you can go in uh, and get familiar with that system before your courses officially start. There is always an orientation day um, and then the next day the classes will begin. I am gonna share, like I said, an exciting project with you which will give you kind of that student perspective early. So I did wanna point out that I do have two links here. One link is a video um, showing, you know, what it's like to learn online at Fanshawe College if you wanna watch that at a later time. And the second one is just a link to um, our online hub, which I'll introduce in just a moment. Um, but in, in particular, it's the Frequently Asked Questions page, which I think is a really important page because many times students have asked similar questions in the past. And so you might find answers to some of your uh, questions that you have here. So there's lots of different questions and answers there. So the Frequently Asked Questions page is on what we call our online hub. And the online hub is where all the information about learning online is. And so you'll see we've kind of got two, uh, four different um, categories here. One, how do you get started as an online learner? So it talks about uh, different resources that you might need, whether it's textbooks or technology, um, and some suggestions about how to be a successful online learner. And then some different things that we have at the college to really support you once you are an online student. So whether that's academic advisors or counseling or learning center to provide extra help maybe in math or science. And then we have some ways that you can still get involved from an online perspective and we're working on new ways all of the time. So what I'm really excited to share with you is a new initiative that we're doing, which we're kind of calling Fanshawe Open. And it's all about trying to provide resources to you that are open and uh, allow you to kind of experience that um, online learning um, experience ahead of time. And so there's three resources that I really, I'm really wanting to share with you. And the first one is our readiness assessment. So um, sometimes students might have concerns about whether or not they would be a good online learner. And again, going back to those student testimonials, you know, we learned that you know, having good time management skills and being organized are really important when you're learning online. And I would argue that this is all really important no matter what, right? Um, but if you are interested, you can go ahead here and you just have to give us your name and email address so that we can email you the results of the survey. But the survey is a readiness indicator. So it walks you through a couple questions um, that would help kind of prompt to decide whether or not you might or may not be ready um, for online learning. And if there are some areas that you need some extra help, there are resources that we can provide you to support you. Um, so it looks at the um, five categories of self-direction, uh, what your learning style is, uh, your study habits, and then the last two are around kind of your technology skills and then whether or not you have maybe the right computer equipment. So this might be your first place to start um, just to kind of get an idea. The survey takes no more than 10 minutes. The second resource that we've created here is uh, a brand new open textbook. Um, at Fanshawe, we are trying really hard to um, move some of our courses to um, open textbooks so students don't have to pay for them. They're freely available and accessible, and um, they can be used in many different formats. So you can still download and print them, or you can read them online. And so this is one of our books here. And if you click on read the book, you've got some options here to look at the different chapters. And so You'll see the book is really focused on, you know, who am I as an online learner? What is my, my, my journey look like in terms of who am I going to be working with in terms of like, you know, the other students? Um, what are the roles of my instructor or professor in the online course environment? 
And then the last few chapters are really kind of helping you um, get ready for online learning in terms of you know, giving you some practical tips and resources for um, time management, professional communication, and how to complete some assignments online. And so if you want to at any time, once you get the link um, from the slides, you can go through and you can read the book. And the book does have some interactives in it. So after you've read the book, you can check and see if you got your answer right. So our last project that we did was based on this open textbook and we created a whole brand new instance uh, of our learning management system, which I mentioned before, we're calling Fanshawe Online. And it's um, available to anyone now. So you can go ahead and create your own login so you can see what our learning management system looks like. And so you'll see here, this is the landing page. And what you will do is go over here to this button and you'll click the register and you'll create just a quick login so that you'll be able to access the course. And because I already have my login, I'm gonna go ahead and log in to show you what it looks like. So this is what our dashboard looks like. And this is identical to our Fanshawe Online, which is our learning management system. And so all of your courses will populate here. Right now, we only have one course in here called Learning to Learn Online at Fanshawe. So you can click on that. Our welcome video for online learning is here, as well as an audio message. All of your courses will be exactly the same. There'll be kind of a, a, a main uh, landing page, which will tell you, you know, who your instructor is and give you some announcements uh, related to the course. And then what you would do is go into your content. And the content basically is everything that you will do for each either module or week. And we've set it up a little bit differently because we're not in a, a, an actual um, classroom setting. Um, but for instance, if I went into say unit one, I can click on and see uh, what the um, learning outcomes are for that week. So what is it that the professor is expecting me to know by the end of the week? And then if I hit the next page, I will get into the content. So it'll talk a little bit about what I want to know. In this course, we've uh, integrated in some interactives and we're working on doing this a bit more with our courses. So just like in the textbook, you can check if your answers are correct. So once I have done my content, I can go in and maybe I want to contribute to a discussion board that week with other students in my class. Uh, and so we can do the same thing in the, um, that we're calling this the open LMS. So you can do this in the open LMS as well. So if I go to the unit um, two discussion board, you can see that the instructor has posted a question for me as a student. And then I can go down and see what the other students have posted. And I can go and reply to those posts as well. So that, that was quite a long uh, discussion post. And then you see Jane Doe has uh, done a sample discussion reply here. As well, you might have the opportunity to, to do some quizzes within the learning management system. And so we have set up a quiz in here as well that you can go in and take based on the unit um, three activity. So you could go and click here and you could complete that quiz online. I'm just showcasing a few of the most commonly used tools. There are a lot of tools in here. And once you create that login, you can go in and, and play around and get comfortable with the system. I do want to um, point out that um, we do have our help in here as well, which is exactly the same as in our Fanshawe Online. And so if you need help at any time, you can go in and find help on how to use all these different tools and functions within the system. As well, we do have um, some videos um, that you can watch as well. So that's our exciting project that I wanted to share. So hopefully you really enjoy it. And I don't wanna to spend too much more time, but I, I did wanna share some resources that we do have for all of our students. Um, and so if you click the link here, it takes you to a brand new hub that we've created um, during this uh, pandemic time that lists kind of all the resources that are available to students who are studying online. We have uh, e-learning coordinators as well. So in addition to your program coordinator, so if you choose a particular program, you will have a person who uh, man helps manage that program. They are your program coordinator. You also have access um, in some schools to an e-learning coordinator. And so if you scroll down here, you'll see all of our e-learning coordinators and their contact information. So if you have any questions about learning online. Uh, lastly, we have, um, uh, academic advisors as well for programs. And so um, you can also go to them if you have any questions um, when you're studying. 
Uh, and then there's some other things here I just uh, I linked to, especially the Learning Center, because that's a really wonderful tool. They're offering a lot of workshops um, uh, virtually during this time uh, to help people if they're struggling in certain courses. And then um, we also have links here to the free technology that's available to you. So all students at Fanshawe um, get access to uh, free technology. So you can go to the link and see what software is available. So we have Office 365 as well as Windows 10. So you can get those um, to start your program. And then the Brightspace Pulse app. So the app is really for our learning management system. And the great thing I find about this is it really helps students stay on track. So if you know they're taking six different courses and they have due dates coming up in all those different courses, the app helps amalgamate those due dates and sends reminders and notifications as well. Uh, students even use it to reply to discussion boards and to really kind of interact with their professor and their classmates. So there's more information there um, about that. So that's it for me. Uh, my slides will be shared after the session and, and feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions uh, about learning online. Thank you so much, Shauna. Uh, that was great information for students. Uh, and Shauna, could, uh, with the expertise she has, she can talk for a long time about the online experience here at uh, Lawrence Kinlan School of Business and at Fanshawe. Uh, thank you, Shauna, for sharing that with you. I would like to tell students the PowerPoint I shared, uh, the PowerPoint Shauna shared, and the links also to um, uh, the open uh, Fanshawe Open uh, on Learning Management System would also be shared in a follow-up email that will go to all the participants for today. So th thank you so much, Shauna. Now, um, awesome. So before um, I talk to our students who are here, what I'd like to do is talk about a survey that will be coming your way. So all the students who've attended the session will get a survey. The survey will talk about, okay, what what other things you'd like to hear to hear from us about. We'll also ask you if you want to talk to one of our international representatives one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you have a chance of winning a $25 gift card. It could be one of the cards that you, uh, it, it could be of your choice. It could be in Amazon, Netflix, uh, uh, Google, uh, and Apple. Uh, this is the link. This link we will also share on the chat box uh, as well. And um, uh, I would really like to uh, have you answer these questions. So with that, it's now time to hear from our students. Students like you who came to Fanshawe, who started either in the summer or started in winter or last fall, uh, but students who've experienced Fanshawe's online uh, learning. So um, uh, I would uh, request the students to um, start their videos and uh, I'd like to welcome them. And thank you so much for agreeing to be on this session with us. Awesome. So um, I have a few questions that uh, I have for the students that we prepared. Um, and I, I'd come to each of you to get your response in the sense, um, your personal experiences through this online journey with Fanshawe. And um, if there is anything else that you'd like to share as well, you can uh, ask that. So my first question is, um, uh, in general, like, can you share your um, online learning experience uh, with, with the students who are here who are looking at starting in the fall intake with Fatsha? Hi, everyone. Hi, Julian, go ahead, please. Hi, okay. Well, I'm in the business marketing program and I have the experience if uh, I started my program face-to-face uh, last fall and at the end of the second term we went online to the coronavirus so at that time it uh, we are not prepared for that so it was a little bit strange and we were worried how it's gonna be and uh, but we finished it was good and now I'm doing uh, the third term and it's all online and it's it has been an amazing experience uh, i'm from uh, i'm an old school uh, student because uh, i did my first graduation and my post graduation uh, face to face 
in Brazil. And I didn't believe that it could be possible to learn and to have a good experience online because I had never um, done something like this. And uh, I really like to have the contact with people and with the professors. But until now, the experience has been amazing because it's really possible to connect and to learn and to develop some skills, new skills that we need for this new world. So it, uh, it has been amazing. And uh, Bhavanjit. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Bhavanjit Kaur. Thank you, sir. And uh, when I would like to share my experience. When I, first of all, when I received a mail from Fanshev College regarding online session, then I was very upset at that time. But when I opted the course, then I feel very relaxed because the professors are very helpful and uh, they deliver the classes very effectively. And uh, moreover, they also told us to participate in the class and they will also give us a grade on that performance. So I'm very happy that I opted the online courses and it will be and it is very helpful for me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Bhavanjit. I know, I think we miss the face-to-face -face, uh, in-person contact with our students as well. Um, when I'm interacting with students, I get energy out of it. Talking to students, looking at their concerns, uh, guiding them through their journey here at Fanshaw. So we were really upset as well that we had to move online. But I think everyone has realized this is the new reality for a little bit. Um, but I'm glad that both of you are having positive experiences uh, but I do want to talk about what like, has been the biggest challenge, right? It's been, overall, it's been great for sure for you, which is amazing. I'm really happy hearing that. But what has been the big challenge in terms of online learning for you? Because like all our life, we've, we've had professors to tell us, your assignment is due on Friday 25th or whatever at 3 p.m. Whereas online, it's like you're managing a lot of that. Um, so, like, there would have been differences to your previous education, but what has been a challenge for you could be around online learning, could be around uh, anything else going on in your life, but what has been a challenge for you personally? Uh, Julianne, can we start with you? Well, for me, the most challenge is to be on track because all the other things I'm still working for my company in Brazil. And I have my family here with me in London, my husband and two kids. And they are at home because they are not having school. So uh, I think the, the challenge is to be organized and uh, to keep on track with all the due dates because we will have, I think, all the programs, we will always have a lot of due dates in the same week. And uh, we need to study a lot. It's not, it's not easy. We have to study. It's not like uh, just watch uh, a video and uh, yeah, we have tests and quizzes and assignments to do. We have to research and write papers. So um, I believe we have to have in mind that uh, it's time to be professional. So we need to uh, have a schedule and uh, be uh, on time with everything and do not lose time doing things that uh, will not be helpful for our graduation here. Yeah, uh, I think that's uh, that's huge. I'm struggling with one uh, kid. So with you working and then managing kids and uh, learning, uh, it, this is uh, amazing that you have that kind of commitment, Julianne. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we're really, really happy to have you as a Fanshawe College student. Bhavanji, what has been a, a challenge for you? Well, for Indian people, there are a lot of challenges because we are not physically connected with the Canadian teachers or professors. First of all, the time management is the biggest challenge for us. But nowadays, I can manage my time very effectively and uh, I am not facing any challenge regarding this. Because as I told earlier, I'm very happy regarding my online classes. So I don't think so. I have a challenge regarding this situation. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think um, 
this has forced us to learn um, technology, uh, time management, all those things. I can already see, I do a lot of these online sessions. I can already see Julianne and Bhavanjit are experts. They're muting themselves when I'm speaking. Like they're, they are so familiar with this technology now. If last year I would have done this session, uh, I, I know the kind of struggles I would have had with people. Let's say we've not used the technology, but now all of us have become so used to this technology. We're living this day in day out. That shows in your um, uh, your your uh, the way you're carrying yourself in this session. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to talk about there are many tools that everyone uses, right? Now at Fanshaw, um, every professor has a different way of teaching. Now that also reflects in how they are teaching. They're doing a live session. They're doing, some of them would be doing live plus recorded. Some of them would be giving you maybe case studies. They're, te they're teaching you in a different way, but that also reflects in the technology they're using, the tools that they're using. Um, Shauna did introduce our students to a few tools, but can you name a few tools, uh, Julianne, that you used or your uh, professors used or anything, any new tool that you discovered which was helpful to you uh, but also, like, what was your what were your professors using in terms? Yeah, um, my professors are using uh, Bongo. That's one from FOL. Uh, it can uh, they can do online class like live class, and they can share slides there. We can chat and open our mic mic to talk and. Um, in my class, one one of my cars we will have to use the bongo the bongo to record a video from us to do a project. So we need to be familiar with this, and we are also using Zoom. So uh, for students who are not uh, use yeah, not um, not know this uh, tool, maybe it's good to download this and uh, try to experience experiment this with some friends and try to how to manage this tool and we also use uh, one tool from Cisco Webex and uh, with our classmates sometimes we use the discussion board on the FOL uh, some students uh, uh, like to use WhatsApp to develop the projects um, although some students here in Canada they don't use WhatsApp but uh, we international, I think we use uh, more. And uh, I think it's this, this one. Awesome, thank you. Bhavanjit, uh, for you, what have been the tools that your professors have used and what have you found really helpful? Like, are there other tools that you're using as well? Well, as my friend said that, generally professors deliver their uh, lectures on Bongo. And uh, sometimes there uh, are some network issues and uh, for our comfort, they also use Cisco WebEx and they deliver their lectures on uh, both Bongo and uh, WebEx nowadays. And uh, I think these tools are very best for us. So I am satisfied with all. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences, Julian and Bhavanjit. I, I do want to give you an opportunity to tell future students um, about what you found helpful to stay engaged online, right? Like how to stay engaged, uh, because as Bhavanji, you said, you are in India um, and your professors are in Canada. Julian, you're here in Canada, but still you're not meeting your professors. But how to stay engaged with your class and community uh, in general, but also specifically if you have any advice for future students in terms of how to uh, make the best out of online learning here as well. Uh, Julian? Well, you need to participate. Even if it's online class, you need to ask questions, uh, write in the chat or write an email to the professors. Uh, in the beginning of the program, the class, you need to introduce yourself from, through the discussion board, the FOL, or maybe use the Padlet, or with this is another tool that uh, I learned to use. It's like a... a a, uh, a note, uh, an online note that you can give some, let some uh, message there. So you need to introduce yourself in a professional way and engage with your classmates because you do have new projects. Even if you don't know your classmates, you have to work with them. 
so uh, you need to be polite as well and uh, try to um, uh, engage with your classmates and uh, maybe try to connect the things that you are learning with our real world and uh, try to send them some articles, news, and uh, try to, to be uh, helpful with your new friends, even they are online ones. So it will be a, a great time to develop these skills that I mentioned before. Awesome, thank you, Julian. Uh, Bhavanjit, your advice to future students uh, and how do you stay engaged with, with uh, your current program? Actually, staying connected with your professors is most important because nowadays, physically, we are not here in Canada. So staying connected with those is most important. And the one of uh, the next thing is that uh, you have to make an active participant. Like when the professor told you to answer, then you, uh, you should have to type the answer in the chat box. And uh, in the FOL, there is an uh, attendance or checklist or a class list where we can uh, send a message to our uh, classmates too. And uh, if we have uh, any problem, then uh, we can also send email to our professor. And uh, they also give us a, uh, give us a direct or, a, I mean, like, a, we, can, we receive a direct mail from in 24 hours. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Great. It shows that you've really uh, explored all the features of the Fanshawe Online and uh, other tools as well. Julianne Bhavanjit. I think uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning. Um, students have a lot of questions and of course the college tries to answer those questions, but hearing from students, I think is so uh, better, so much better for students uh, because you have experienced the same problems that many uh, fall students would be experiencing. So thank you for being willing to share your experiences with our students, uh, Julian and Bhavanjit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to try and look at uh, some of the questions that we've been getting, uh, and I'll try and answer a few of the questions as well. Uh, now, before I do that, I would say that program specific questions I'm really not able to answer because we have uh, thousands of students online, and I can't. Uh, we did send program specific email to talk about your program if it's in a blended format or an on or an or fully online program. Now, if you don't have that, that's okay. Um, uh, you, uh, you, the survey uh, that we have sent you, you will have a tool to ask for a one-on-one one, one -on -one appointment there as well. And we will get in touch with you for that. But uh, in general, if you have questions, international at fanshawc.ca is a good email address to reach out for. But uh, please check your email. Emails did come to all fall students. But also, if they did not, if you have an agent or if you're in touch with a Fanshawe College representative, please talk to them and they have the complete list as well of what is online, fully online, what is blended. Uh, so I'm going to try and answer some of the questions as well. Again, I have hundreds of questions, uh, but I'll see. I'll, I'll try to answer some of the questions which uh, one person has asked, but many are thinking uh, the same question as well. So. Uh, of course, a big question is about the self-isolation, right? And I did cover that in my PowerPoint. Fanshawe Cares will help you provide a plan um, for the self-isolation. At this point, anyone who's arriving needs to provide the immigration with a self-isolation plan. What is their plan for self-isolation? Because in those 14 days, you have to have an accommodation, you have to live there and have to have uh, like grocery delivered at your home and things like that. So Fanshawe Cares is creating something right now and we will communicate with you very, very soon. The question I have here is, will Fanshawe pay for these 14 days? Um, so Fanshawe Cares uh, services that we've done for 10 years, in essence, have paid for your transportation from Toronto to London uh, and has paid for about two nights of accommodation here in the city of London as well. So. Uh, I don't know the details. We're working on the details. We will communicate this uh, as soon as possible. But we are absolutely aware that this plan is required for any student who'd like to arrive uh, for fall. Uh, what we've done is we've delayed our intake by two weeks so that that gives enough time for students to arrive and do the self-isolation if required as well. 
there are questions coming about the postgraduate work permit after finishing the online program. Um, now, the, what immigration allows is uh, up to 50% of your program can be finished out of country. Uh, out of country. That's they're very clear about that terminology. Up to fifty percent of your program can be completed outside the country. Um, now, um, more details are awaited on that, but I think they've given as much flexibility as they could uh, around this, and we expect in the future as well they will keep on uh, clarifying that. Uh, any portion of your program that you're doing online, at least till thirtieth first December. Uh, they've already said that, uh, does not impact your postgraduate work permit uh, eligibility. So that is uh, that very, very clear that anything that you're doing online till end of this year does not impact your postgraduate work permit eligibility. Uh, Canada was one of the first countries to come up with things like this clarification for international students. Uh, Canada is also clar uh, classifying international students as essential. Uh, so when you're required to travel, they will classify you as essential. I will reiterate right now, Canada is saying, please don't travel uh, till June 31st. They've put that in place, um, but there, there are clarifications that will be coming out uh, soon around who can travel, what are the documentations required to travel. And all I can tell you is Fanshawe College and our services will be available to first provide you that information, but also if there are things that are required from our end, uh, we will help you get those things as well. So I'm trying to look at uh, other programs as well. So again, the program specific questions, I'm not able to answer. Um, we have more than 250 programs. So I can't even remember for each program, which is online, which is blended, but that email was sent to students. Please look at that. But again, if you don't find that, please get in touch with one of our representatives and we'll be happy to help you as well. Uh, visa centers, of course, there are there are questions about visa centers. What, how are visas will be processed and will they be processed? The fact is every country is different right now. Every country is in a different uh, stage of opening up. Uh, um, Canada has this fantastic online visa application process. This is the time to use that online visa application process. So um, please use the online visa application process. If your documentation is complete, um, Canada has said uh, that the biometrics that are required and uh, uh, the health um, medicals that are required, not providing that will not result in a refusal of your study permit application. So that's a great news that because earlier they generally they said, oh, uh, we are processing your application. You need to provide your biometrics within the next 14 days or 21 days, whatever number they gave. Uh, and if you didn't provide it within those number of days, your application was closed or rejected. That will not happen right now. They understand these delays that are happening. We are hearing now out of many countries, the study permits have started being processed. Hundreds of our students had applied for study permits even before the visa office is closed. Uh, those applications are still under process because the visa offices had closed, right? Uh, but now as these offices start opening up, those applications are being processed, but any new applications, we recommend you apply online uh, as much as possible. So uh, there is a question which says, uh, is it compulsory to do online class from Canada itself or we can do from home country also? So uh, the question is from Parth. Parth, thank you for asking that question. When we are saying your programs are fully online, there is no requirement to be in Canada for your first semester. Now, these clarifications are only for fall 2020, uh, right? So for fall 2020, if your program is fully online, there is no requirement to be in Canada. Immigration has already said, doing 50% of a program out of country is totally fine. And anything that, that you do online till end of December would have no, um, no impact on your postgraduate work permit eligibility. Right, so there is question around laptop requirements, right? What would be the requirements for technology? Um, now, generally speaking, uh, you can find all this on our website around laptop requirements and all. Only for 
graphic, like a program, program which are very specific in technology, would the requirements be different? Uh, and those requirements would, uh, uh, would be communicated with students in the future, future course as well. Okay, I'm trying to uh, look for any questions that students have around online learning um, so that I can address the question to Shauna. If there are any questions that students have about online learning, please mention that in the chat box and I will be very, very happy to pose that question to Shauna. Okay, just because there are so many questions, I'm not able to read through all the questions right away. So th there are questions coming in which are asking, um, what happens if um, I, I start fall in uh, online, but I can't travel even in January? Um, now, frankly speaking, uh, our expectation of the college, expectation of everyone is that after June and uh, July, August, for example, travel would be allowed for essential. And as I said earlier, international students are classified as essential. What documentation and everything is required will be uh, made available. Uh, so that is the expectation. However, if the reality changes, one, uh, we are confident that the Immigration Canada would adapt to that and will provide further guidance because we have to depend on that, right? It is not just uh, up to Fanshawe College or uh, our community. It is up to uh, the Immigration Canada, the policies that they come up with. And till now, they've come up with great policies. Um, one thing that Canada has differentiated Canada, for example, is um, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, CERB. So as an example, if people were working um, before the COVID-19 shut down the shops and things like that, if a student had, for example, earned at least $5,000 in the last 12 months, they were eligible for that $500 a week uh, CERB from the Canadian government. Oh, this is for students who are already in Canada, right? But that just shows you the level of commitment the government has to, to everyone who's in Canada, not just Canadian citizens and permanent residents, uh, but to international students as well. Could more have been done, of course, all, always, but Canada was the only country who had that kind of financial assistance going for even international students. Uh, so that has differentiated Canada, um, and we expect in the future as well, they will be very careful about the policies that they give out clarification for. So uh, th there is a question around uh, study permit requirement. So that has not changed. Even when it's online, you need a study permit, right? Uh, so if you don't get a study permit, just like before, if your study permit is denied or you don't get a study permit response by the date that we wanted by, that's fine. You can look at a future intake as well. Uh, but study permit is, is an absolute requirement as well. Uh, we are being told, for example, when the visa offices open up, um, work permits, and study permits are going to be the number one priority. And wherever they're opening up, that is the number one priority for visa offices. Tourist visas and things like that are not number one priority. So if you know a visa office, if there are 100 applications coming into that office, at least 50 are tourist visa applications. That won't be processed right now. So study permit and work permits are going to take priority. That has been very clear. Um, that has been made very, very clear. So. We expect as soon as this opens, we will start getting decisions around study permits as well. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna try and take a few other questions as well. Um, okay, yeah, of course, students are asking about the, the program fee for the online term. Um, now, the program fee does not change at all uh, for the online term. That is um, standard. Um, the program fees that have been published, the program fees that you've been communicated with, the program fees do not change for the online term. 
all the services, as I said, available to you uh, in person would be available to you virtually. However, having said that, students who are not in Canada, for example, um, the health insurance, for example, is a big, is I'll not say big, but a substantial part of your, of your fee. So for example, if you're not in Canada, that fee would not be charged to you. So those clarifications would be coming uh, in the coming weeks as well. Um, but uh, apart from that, the academic fee would remain, <coughs> sorry, consistent for all students as well. Okay. All right, I'm trying to look for questions which um, students are asking as well uh, around. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm getting a lot of questions which I think I've um, already answered. So again, there is a question around postgraduate work permit eligibility. Um, till December 31st um, and like what assurance do I have the postgraduate work permit will not be eligible, would not be impacted by studying online. Uh, Fanshawe College did not, does not have any rule in your postgraduate work permit. However, the immigration has clearly posted on their website these requirements and uh, they have said that it will not be impacted. Um, so that is the government of Canada saying it will not be impacted and they've clarified this not recently They've been they've clarified this a long time back that online would not impact your postgraduate work permit eligibility. So a student is asking around, can I join May 2020 intake um, due to the latest amendments? So I'm not sure what your situation is, but May 20, it's too late to join the May 2020 intake. Now you have to uh, look at the September 2020 intake uh, only. So there is a question uh, from Basil around uh, time difference during Zoom calls, right? Uh, if there is an online class happening, what, how would that time difference be accounted for as well? Shauna, um, I'm sorry, um, uh, all the questions I've had are around visas, but I was wondering if this is a question that you can talk about, if there are synchronous classes happening, uh, how do uh, like we ensure that students are able to access this even if they're outside of Canada? Right. So if there are synchronous sessions, usually what will happen is, um, you know, the faculty member uh, will communicate when that synchronous time is happening. And if students uh, can't make that, then there might be options to host another one or to have it recorded so that the student can watch it after and then still participate um, by sending questions in after the fact. Awesome. Thank you, Shauna. Okay, I'm trying to find out. Okay, so th there is a, a question around blended programs. So students who have blended programs, um, what uh, are, uh, is it mandatory for them to be in Canada? And the answer is yes. If your program is a blended program, uh, if you get the visa to start the program, you have to be in Canada. And when I was talking about the self-isolation plan and things like that, the students who are in the blended program uh, of course, would be our priority around those uh, self-isolation plans as well. So if your program would be uh, would be a uh, blended program, you would need to be in Canada. And so the, if the program starts September 21st, you should plan to be here a, a few weeks before that as well. And as I said, uh, the self-isolation plan help that the financial cares can provide would be available to you in the coming weeks. Okay, all right, I'm trying to... So um, there is another question around blended. Um, and if the program is blended, uh, when does the blended portion or the face-to-face -face portion of that program starts? Right now, the clarification we have is, of course, in the coming weeks, we'll get more detailed information. Uh, but if your program says blended, that means before the start of the program, which is September 21st, you have to be in Canada. 
and should have completed a self-isolation so that you can take part in those face-to-face -face classes. So if you are in a blended program, the requirement is to be in Canada before the start of the program, the start date of the program. Okay. All right, so uh, I am getting a lot of questions, but I will take uh, last two questions and uh, I'm just trying to um, look at this. So there are questions coming in around um, the, the Canadian experience in online, right? Uh, now, the, the, the fact of the matter is online is giving you an opportunity to start your program right away and not compromise with your time that you'll need to get your work permit. Because eventually all of our students would want to get a work permit. It is helping you not delay that time. Um, so students, of course, are asking about um, uh, like how, how would the co-op and uh, the experiential learning happens. Now, the plan is to have a limited portion of the program online. And once that goes, once we have in-person, all the things like internship co-op that were available earlier will be available to you. Um, uh, during this uh, summer intake, some students had to do co-ops, which were mandatory. Our career services actually made sure they were all still able to do their co-ops and uh, internships online during that semester. Now for the future, it will be a little different, but our plan is to have a limited portion online and then to have a big portion face-to-face -face in class in Canada so that you can still get that Canadian experience and everything. What you have to remember is this is not a fan shop college decision. This is not something that we are deciding to put it online. This is just something that is being decided for everyone because of the pandemic. Um, so you have to remember that this is not something which is up to fan shop to, not, to have this online or not have this online. But we're trying to do the best we can uh, to um, uh, support the students through this uh, not so perfect um, um, rea reality that we are in right now. Okay, so I'm gonna take one last question. So the question is um, uh, a student who got his study permit and it expires next March and the student is starting in the fall of 2020. And the question is, should I extend the study permit before coming to Canada? And I would say the answer is you don't have to worry about it. Uh, when you arrive in Canada and you start your program, uh, you contact one of our immigration advisors almost right away and get started on a study permit extension uh, for, uh, uh, for your future semesters as well. So our immigration advisors will help you through the study permit extension, work permit extensions and questions like that as well. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, you can arrive and we will help you with the study permit extensions as well. Okay, awesome. So um, one last question that I'm getting um, from the students as well is around the GIC. Um, so in some countries, we understand there is a GIC component um, and the GIC component, that, is it impacted in any way by this? Now, my advice would be to contact Scotia Bank or CIBC or whosoever your GIC provider is. Um, but uh, our, our understanding is GIC would not be impacted if you've already paid the fee for GIC. If you're changing your start date, for example, from May to September, you just need to inform them of that and they will, they will help you through that process. I understand there are many, many uh, questions that are coming in. There are probably like a thousand questions that have come in already. Uh, what we'll do is we'll try to answer many of these questions in the email responses that we send back to you. Um, we've tried to give you a sense of what online learning looks like, uh, give you a sense from current students who've chosen online, which we are very thankful for. Uh, and how can fans support you through that, through this process of uh, online learning, this new reality for everyone? Um, and some updates from immigration as well. Um, so what I like to do is uh, thank all our panelists, thank all the students who joined us today. Um, thank you, Shauna, uh, 
uh, Julianne and Bhavanji for joining us uh, this morning and help answering these questions for our students. Um, uh, Shana, I'd uh, like to have you give um, uh, your parting remarks to our students. Well, I just wanna say we're really looking forward to having you come and study with us in September. And if you need anything at any time, just know that you know both the, um, the academic offices, your professors, the international office, uh, and any of the other supports we have, we're all here for you, okay? So best of luck and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you, whether it's on campus or virtually. Awesome, thank you, Shauna. Uh, Bhavanji, Julianne, uh, any final words for the students quickly that you'd wanna share? Hi, um, just be proud of you and uh, have in mind that you can do it and uh, enjoy your time at Fensho, even if it's online. Bhavanji. Yes, I want to say that I am very lucky that I got admission in Fanshawe College. And uh, I suggest students, please opt the online course. There is a, uh, no need to hesitate because uh, it's all good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for all the students for joining us. I do understand there were hundreds of questions that I can only take. Took a, I, I only took a handful. We will try and answer many of these questions in the email responses that we do send out. We have an elaborate plan for that. Please answer the survey. Uh, Ali, if you can share the survey link again, that would be great. Um, please uh, try to answer the survey. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, here today. Thank you to all the panelists. We really hope uh, that you choose Financial College. Thank you so much. Have a great day.